Welcome to the SEMrush Academy training videos on how to use the site audit tool. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Ross Tavendale. I'm the MD of Type A Media. We're an SEO company based in London. Uh, today, we're going to be taking you through how to use the SEMrush site audit tool to fix your technical SEO problems. So we've used SEMrush for the past four years to help grow our clients' organic traffic to the point that actually now powers our entire business. We've used the audit tool to help with a plethora of problems from mission critical migrations to daily technical audits from massive multinationals to small SMBs. In this series, we'll be going through the technical strategy used by Type A Media on our client site and how we use the site audit tool to find and fix all of the issues on these sites. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you're going to learn is how to actually set up the crawler. Now, SEMrush makes it really easy to get started, but there are some essentials you need to know first. So firstly, the domain limit of pages. This is the first screen you're going to see, and you may be asking, well, why do I want to limit the amount of pages? Well, if you have an enterprise site, it's actually a better idea to break the site into sections and crawl a lower number of pages. We do this because it still brings up all the template level issues without needing to wait an entire day to crawl millions and millions of pages. In SEO, it's all about cost benefit analysis. You can specify if you want to crawl just a subdomain like blog.domain.com or a subfolder. You can then choose what you want the bot to crawl from the site to the sitemaps. Next is crawler settings. So next we need to get a bit more technical. Most sites are fine crawling as SEMrush bot. However, if you're struggling to crawl due to the CMS or technology restrictions, Google bot is a really good option. If you're in a hosted solution like Shopify or Squarespace, or your sysadmin has a really sensitive control in your server, choose one URL every two seconds. Allow disallow URLs. This bit is where we really define our crawl. If there's a particular problem area on the site that we want to investigate, you can define the exact paths that you want to include and exclude. Parameters. If the site has a lot of parameters caused by a search box or pagination, we want to exclude these from the crawl. The best way to check for them is to click this link to Search Console to retrieve the parameters that Google has already recognized. Website restrictions. Next up is website restrictions. If you're crawling a staging server as you're migrating a site, typically it's going to be behind a login. So you can add those details by clicking crawling with your credentials. If your robot files blocks third-party crawlers, you can choose to ignore it. Next up is the schedule. If you're going to be fixing things every week, I'd run this on a regular basis so you can see improvements over time. As a safety measure, I like to crawl three times per week. So if a ranking fluctuation happens, I can easily rule out technical SEO as the cause. Now, when you think about your website, think of it like your own musculoskeletal body. Everything is connected to each other and it affects each other in some sort of different way. So just when the doctor kind of hits your knee with a hammer and your foot shoots out, similarly, when we change one aspect of the site, many pages are going to be affected. Therefore, one of the most important factors in technical SEO is setting priorities. Now, to do this, we use something called the Eisenhower matrix. And essentially, it's going to define important and urgent. These are things that we need to do right away. It's going to look at things that are important and not urgent which are things that we can make a business case for now and we can fix it over time. And then we've also got things that are not important, but they are very urgent, which is something to be briefed to someone else or a secondary team. And things that are not important and not urgent, also known as nice to have. Something that you'll write down a piece of paper and probably just throw away and never actually do. So inside of this decision-making matrix, we're going to approach key aspects on technical SEO theme by theme. And these themes include hygiene. So this is basic technical checks that your site fundamentally needs to work with the search engines. Organization. This is how to best structure the content on your site so you're going to get maximum visibility and better user experience. 
presentation, essentially looking at the elements on this site that are going to affect your click-through rate and the way your search results actually look when someone Googles something. And next is page power. This is essentially how pages interact and pass page rank from one page to another. We're also going to look at code and security. This is essentially organizing the technology on your site for a safe user experience. We're also going to be looking at internationalization, and this is how your site is going to be perceived from country to country if you use multiple languages. Also, we're going to look at performance. How is your site working across different devices and different internet connections? And lastly, reporting. How do we report on all these different issues and put it into some sort of project management workflow? The first screen you see in the site audit tool is the overview. This presents all the top level issues, warnings and notices, as well as thematic reports about the specific issues around crawlability, security and internal linking. The next tab is the issues tab. This is a full list of every issue that we've been able to find. You can click into each of them and get a more detailed report. The next tab is the crawled pages. You can view this as a list or as a tree structure. The tree structure is particularly useful to get you an overview of the content silos on your site and to see how you're organizing the information you have for the crawlers. The next tab is statistics. If you're an agency pitching for new business or an SEO working in-house that needs stakeholder buy-in, the graph view is particularly useful for your presentations. The next tab is the compare crawls tab. This is useful for looking at progress over time and can be used to diagnose your ranking fluctuations. The progress tab is great for reporting. It lets you look at total issues over time and even drill down into specific issues. We particularly like the notes section as it lets me mark up our progress so we can provide context on what's going on from a technical point of view. Now, when you first run your crawl and you look at your dashboard and see all those issues and warnings and notices, you're going to feel a couple of things. Now, your first feeling is probably going to be staving off some sort of a heart attack as you see these thousands of issues kind of light up in your screen. But don't worry. The second impulse is going to be pick up the phone and scream at your developer because they've just made you a website with more holes in it than a piece of Swiss cheese. However, it's important to remember two things. One, a developer's job is to deliver you a website, not to make it rank in search. That's the job of the SEO. Of these thousands of problems, lots and lots of them can be fixed at a template level. This essentially means that you're going to make one fix and you're going to knock out hundreds of different issues. So when we look at the issues, warnings and notices, they're presented in a priority order. Errors are the highest priority fixes that we need to make on the site. So these are typically issues that are going to really hold back your site from making progress because Google is unable to access or understand what's going on in your site. Think of an error like a burst pipe in your kitchen. It really should be fixed as quickly as humanly possible and make sure when you do fix it, you fix it with a permanent solution instead of some homemade solution with chewing gum and paper clips. Warnings are slightly less crucial than errors. Although they have a direct impact on your performance, they are not taking you out of the race altogether. Now, imagine you're running a race at the Olympics, but you need to carry like a bunch of bags with you that are weighing you down. Now, you're still gonna finish the race, but it's gonna be way, way harder to win with all of these issues. Notices are more like points of interest that you need to look into and diagnose. Now, a notice is kind of like getting a pimple. It's probably nothing, but it is best to get it checked out just in case there's some sort of underlying issues. And that's all from this lesson. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.